What is up, players? It's Wobots Tail Up in this mud. Today we finish this plague zombie taken over by Typhus and um, brought back from the dead to serve as an undead minion. And um, don't tell Lewis, but this guy doesn't belong to him. He is a 40k zombie. So, as you can see, we made the skin tone not as green. We added some browns, purples, a little bit more of a realistic hue to it. We painted in the silvers, we did some rust effects on the weapons, finished them off, and then added in the gooey gooey blood and toxins that Typhus uses to transform regular dead bodies into mindless, shambling plague zombies. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun painting this guy up and filming him up for you, so um, hope you all enjoy it. Alright players, so today hopefully we're gonna finish our Frankenstein-y green skin guy. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually we're gonna take some Raikland Flesh, Flesh Shade. Raikland Flesh Shade. And we're gonna paint this all over the figure. I've been looking at some some color photographs of Frankenstein monster and um, and you know those kinds of makeup people who do those kinds of like costumes and makeup and stuff and you can see that even though the skin tone is green in the corners in the creases and the recesses of the face of like the Boris Karloff Frankenstein of most of the other Frankenstein -y masks and stuff there are, is a color tone of like more of a natural reddish ruddy um, human dark brown kind of quality so it's like the the green of the gangrenous necrotic skin shade is mixed in with a little bit of this this brown color tone which is good I'm also going to use this model to make a uh, word bearers or corn worshipping cultist. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in seeing that. So the next thing we're gonna do with our guy is Master! Master! Oh hello Igor. Today is the annual date of the Orionid Meteor Shower. Are we gonna watch it? Are we gonna watch it? Are we are we are we can we watch it? Please, please, pretty please, pretty, 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 pretty please, with a dead cat on top. Um I'm sorry, Igor. It looks like the Orionid Meteor Shower is gonna happen right before the dawn. And that's four o'clock in the morning, and I'm not gonna stay up that late because I have stuff to do in the morning. Oh! But you are more than welcome to stay up if you want to, Igor, to watch that. Hooray! Take Lewis with you. He's out clubbing. He said he won't be back until the morning. You guys can climb up on the roof and snuggle up with a blanket and the telescope. Watch the meteors fall. So we're taking Ruin Lord Brass now and we're painting over the gold. Or the, um, the brassy sections. One more time. And what else can we do while we wait for the shade to dry? I think we're just going to wait for the shade to dry. I don't want to attack any of the um, metal pieces sticking on the plague zombies skin just yet. We'll let this 
Agrax or, or um, Raikland Flesh Shade dry a little bit, and then we'll come back and we'll start to really focus on the um, different areas of skin on the body. He's now looking a lot more realistic, I think. Just green was really toxic avengery, and he just kind of didn't really have any um, depth. Like he just looked like a whole bunch of different green shades. Now with a little bit of a brown, it's a little bit more realistic to um, dead rotting flesh and that's what I really like, a little bit of that realism. Okay, so we'll come back in just a bit to continue working on this guy. Okay, next we're going to paint some of these metal um, things in this guy's body. So we're going to use lead belcher. If you've got the old bolt gun metal, it's pretty much the same thing. Very Frankenstein-y. He's got like this bolt right here on the left side of his head. He's also got um, a whole bunch of these um, things stuck in his back. So I think what we're going to do is he's not really into self-mutilation. This is really just um, these guys are supposedly plague zombies, right? Raised by Typhus. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to make them look like vials. So... The new rust gray, or uh, sorry, the new shadow gray. The closest thing I found is this rust gray color. So we're going to use that to paint like the glass vials. We'll see if it works. If this doesn't work, we'll just... can be easily changed back to... Um, metal like originally I planned on doing them in silver just like they're silver uh, bolts and apparatuses shoved into this guy's back but knowing that typhus is making plague zombies if that's what you're gonna use these guys for I think it's more interesting if he's got like glass vials full of gross stuff. stuff. <clears throat> what we're also going to do is we're going to take some, if you've got it, some Nagaroth, or not Nagaroth, but some Drukai Violet. That's what it is, the purple one. It's a purple shade. If you don't have it, you can use the old Leviathan purple if you've got that. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a sickly color tone to the scar of the eight-pointed star on his right shoulder. That's where we want the most color, but if you feel like the purple is really you can use it elsewhere, then other places you could use it would be uh, anywhere where there is recent bruising. So here on the back, there's a lot of welts and open, really gross looking wounds that you can trace maybe a line of this purple into. It'll look really nice, just like that, see? meets the neck, anywhere where there's a crease in the skin. If you want, you can even drag the color 
across the flat surfaces. Now you don't want to do too much of that though because purple is such a such a rich color when you use when you use it in this way. So you don't want to offset the green too much, but a little a little bit of it will be nice. We're going to take some Tamiya Clear Green and we are going to paint this onto the vial, or I mean not the vial, but the tube that is running down the left side of his chest, right under his arm. Something is pumping all of those, all that play into him. So that is there. And you can also decorate the back. There are some open wounds in his back that you can drag some of this me a clear green down as if the wounds have opened and are now leaking fluid. It's like I'm dribbling them down his ears, down the wounds in his back. There you go. It is pretty gross. Okay, just a little bit more and then we'll be done. We're gonna take some ceramite white and give him an eyeball. A crazy eyeball. So the codex has been out for a while, so I'm kinda curious those of you who've played with the new Chaos Codex and used Plague Zombies and Typhus before, is it worth it? Do they work well? Is, um, is it a viable tactic to use? I know a lot of people were talking on my local forum and some other tactics forums about using these as objective holders. It's the whole bunch of Nurgle Zombies just holding the objective. I want to know if that's something that's worked out or not. And they don't use guns, because they're zombies. They just kind of use their weapons to to hit hit their opponents with and swarm over them. Which makes sense. So this is a Chaos Black that I've used to paint the eyeball in. I'll just zoom in and show you. He is looking at you, kid. He's got that buggy eyeball. Um, and before we go, let's also use some Tamiya Clear Red to add to the to the fun. I think this is a fun little project to add to Spooky Toberfest. So many people have been joining in with the Spooky Toberfest challenge. So I want to thank all of you. Anybody who's joined in so far. And um 
I'll make an update soon about you know everybody that's joined in on the challenge so far so that you can follow their work and see how they're doing um, support we can all support each other I think it'll be great okay so we're also gonna take the Tamiya clear red and we're going to line where these uh, things are popping out almost as if these vials have been um, stabbed shot punched directly into the skin To me, a clear red and to me, a clear green together. It just looks so good. Um, stay tuned to watch how I paint a corn version of this guy. You'll be seeing a lot more of this clear red in that one. And you can just take the clear red after and kind of fill these different little rips, rents in the fabric. As if he got shot through there. And there's that little, he's got a gash in his head that's been stapled over, so I'm just lining that some red there so now our little zombie looks like this all we have to do is really fill the vials with stuff and then we'll be good to go so I'm gonna finish his base and um, let's see what else we can do before we cut this video short. I'm gonna take some Rune Fang Steel, which is the new Mithril Silver, and we're going to edge some of, uh, or all of the silver, all of the metallics, that is. So you're gonna take a little bit of this Rune Fang Steel, and I'm just going to highlight the edges of the knife here. I used to never see what the point of this was, but um, as I've been painting more, I started to understand it's to kind of fool the, the viewer's eye when they're looking at the model to see the outline of what you're working on. So as great as all the shades are to make your model look like it's weather beaten and worn, the um, lining of the blade forms the outline that is going to make it look like realistic. That's why you also line the brass or gold or bronze with silver as well. It fools the viewer into thinking that light is glinting off of the edge and therefore it makes it look shiny. We're just lining the edge of the, the brass and the gold here on the, the pistol. And what we're going to do is we are going to do a little bit of a rust effect. So what you'll need for this is some XV88. Let's see if I can find an orange. There we go. You need some Troll Slayer orange and some Agrax Earthshade. And this is a great um, tip on how to do a quick, easy rust effect. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your XV88, 
I've seen a lot of people do this a lot of different ways, but this has always seemed to me the, uh, the best. <coughs> and you're going to splotch inside of the rusted surface, which you want to rust. So right here we're doing the, the knife blade, yeah? Yeah! And this should only be done on silver, I should mention. That doesn't really work on, on brass as much. Once you've done that, you're going to take your Troll Slayer Orange. And inside of the XP88, you're going to paint in splotches of orange. Chainmail. Okay, and finally, of course, is the Agrax Earthshade. Which dulls down the orange, ties it into the brown of the XV88, and ties that into the silver of the weapon. It also takes that Rune Fang steel and ties it into the rest of the silver. So you end up having a very dirty, rusty looking um, finish effect, which is what we want. A couple more steps to do, then we'll be done. We're going to take Siltek Green now, or if you've got it, the old Hawk Turquoise. Make sure you just got a little bit of it on the tip of your brush. And we're going to paint in the underside of this guy's eyeball. So it looks like he's got a little blue eyeshadow on him. We're also going to line a little bit of it onto the bronze, brass, or gold. I love me some verdigree. Verdigree is the bomb. You really like doing that effect, don't you, master? Yes, I do. Mr. Verdigree Should have been your name, Mr. Verdigree Cause you painted on all of the bronze and the gold Are you done? No. And everyone knows it's there. Alright, I'm done now. I do. Shouldn't you be out watching that meteor shower, Igor? No, Lewis isn't home yet. Alright. Couple more things. Stitches, stitches, metal stitches on his... on his lips and on the, the scar. So Rune Fang Steel, we're doing this because we want the viewer to actually notice the stitches. That's why we're not doing it in Lead Belter. Lead Belter is a very dark silver color, but we want the viewer to see these stitches be grossed out and run away, leaving you to win the game. The thing with metallic paints, especially like all paints, but metallic paints especially is because they've got that met metal pigment right that metallic those 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 flakes that make them look like metal you really need to be sure that you cover 
all the angles when you're painting them on. Otherwise it could look like a staple from one angle, but you take it to another angle and it'll look like a like it'll still be in its original paint that was underneath, so it could still look like his green skin and just like a, a lump on the skin. But you can kind of see the light shining off of it here when I turn it around. So that's kind of the effect I'm going for. For the vials in the back, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take some to me a clear green. We're gonna do this really quick because I'm running out of out of uh, film, and we're just going to paint the vials that are closest to the skin. The part of the vial that's closest to the skin. And don't worry if this doesn't show. You've already got nice blood lining. Gross! You've got nice blood effects lining the outside of them, so. Yeah, I don't know if you can really tell or not that they're supposed to be vials of the uh, the plague zombie virus that have been shoved directly into this poor guy's back to create this zombie, but I think it makes a pretty good effect right there. All right. And that is about it. I'll do the, do the base, we'll come back to take a final look at this guy once the base is all done. Oh, could add a little bit more right here in the front because this poor tube has been stabbed directly into his chest. And we'll be done. So thanks for following, we'll see you at the end of the video. Okay, we're just about done, but I wanted to um, <clears throat> add a little bit more this awesome bloody, bloody effects all over. So I added some to the spiky bit in the knife here. And the thing I did was I took a little bit of Chaos Black and I mixed it in to give it a more... Oh, and then I let it kind of sit out for a while. And it gives the paint, the Tamiya Clear Red, a little bit more of a clotting, crusted, a uh, disgusting look to it for those of you who haven't seen my Night Lords yet. And so when you mix it in with the Tamiya Clear Red and mix it in a little Chaos Black and let it kind of sit out for a while, let me show you what happens. If you look there on the spiky part of the knife, it kind of looks like dark, dark blood. So I also added some to the, to the butt of the auto pistol to kind of denote that he's been using this thing as a club rather than as a as a firearm. And now we're just splattering some blood on the back side like that. I also added a little bit more to the this part of the, the pipe leading down. Added some more blood stains the trouser, just doing a little, little bit of light dabbing and with the with the black, you get a really cool um, effect. You don't want to overdo it. It's not it's not corn, but uh, you do want to get some sense of. How disgusting and gross and bloody this guy is. I also lined a little bit of the tattoo with some more blood. Maybe some flex on his wrist there. 
There. And that, as they say, is that. So thanks for watching this tutorial on how to paint part two, how to finish the plague zombie up. Um, please leave your comments, questions, anything below. I'd love to get some feedback from you guys. I just thought that the, the green for the Frankenstein skin tone was just a little bit too cartoony still, so um, bringing it back to a more gritty, realistic, and of course, bloody and gooey, toxic look is really kind of more my thing. So thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Stay tuned for more Dark Vengeance stuff and more Spooky Toberfest. Latest players.